Hello again everyone, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy here again, and we are going to be continuing this saga, the buildup of this 196 scale US Ohio class submarine by Submarine Works. Uh, since the last video, I have done a little bit of work, I'm going to show you what we've got going on, and uh, we'll start getting into this build in earnest. All right, to begin with, you can see that I have done a little bit of work on the conning tower. So uh, I've got the two halves. These are resin pieces. I used my rotary tool to open up the um, navigation lights in the top. And I installed some three millimeter LED lights uh, in those recesses. Now, what I'm gonna end up doing is uh, putting some tape over there and backfilling that with resin so that it uh, has a nice lens on there. Uh, the other thing that I did is I installed the dive planes. Um, what you can see on this piece here, I've got a piece of brass tubing that will act as a bushing uh, for the included square tubing that comes with the dive planes. So really all that happens is these get um, put together like this. And then the second dive plane here gets um, press fit onto the other side, and we have got our conning tower. The other thing that you can see that I have done, uh, as I mentioned in my first video, the overview video, uh, is I have made some cuts to the hull. Uh, basically, I have made three main cuts to the upper and lower hull. Uh, lower hull has been split, uh, as you can see here, it's about, uh, about 16 inches from the bow. And again, the reason for this is because I've limited the overall length of the model when it is put in the transport case to about 52 inches. So uh, this section here is within that limitation so that this will easily store in the custom carry case. The top hull uh, was split underneath the missile deck uh, and I've made two cuts on there. I've got this section and this one. This small one, um, which was cut on the scribed line uh, at the back there, will be permanently bonded to the um, rear of the boat here and all of the control surfaces, the rudders, dive planes uh, will be mounted on there permanently. This section will be removable and then this bottom lower section will be adhered to the upper hull. And the other thing you can see I've done, I've opened up the um, conning tower area underneath and I've also opened up all of that upper deck uh, according to the scribed lines. So this missile deck will basically just slip down right over top and I'm right now kind of playing with the idea of using um, magnets as a hold down uh, because that missile deck will not have any lift on it. They're going to install no foam um, in that missile deck so magnets should hold it together really, really well. Quick comment about the tools that I used. Uh, I used a razor saw to cut that uh, and basically it only removes about a 64th of an inch of material every time you cut. So uh, as the name implies, you've got a, a razor thin line um, and you don't lose much material or overall length that you would have to backfill again later on. The other thing to take a look at here is I've um, kind of mocked up or, or put in place the supplied bulkheads and these are set up for a three and a half inch diameter watertight cylinder and they will go uh, throughout the course of the hull here to maintain the proper spacing um, in the boat. So um, I have a three and a half inch OTW dive module on the way with a custom um, 14 inch ballast tank I believe it is. Uh, once that gets here, I can start spacing out all of those bulkheads and uh, adhere them permanently in the hull. 
All right, what we are going to do next is uh, going to sand down the bottom of the hull, get rid of the uh, seam line that we have in here, and then I'm going to also open up all of these uh, drain holes that are all prescribed in the bottom of the hull. So I'm going to break up my sander, uh, we're going to sand all of this down, and I'm actually going to throw a little bit of primer on there so that those depressions are easier to see. All right, the uh, hull has been sanded down just with my um, orbital sander here. Uh, you can see that uh, I've gotten rid of that seam line uh, in there. It may be that we need to use a little bit of glazing putty, but we're not at that point right now. Um, you can see these drain holes are now a little bit easier to see, but I'm gonna be putting some primer on there, as I said. Now, before I do that, I have roughed up the hull with some fine grit sandpaper, some uh, 220 grit sandpaper and that's just going to ensure maximum adhesion of the primer to this epoxy hull to make sure that we don't lose our paint job. After that was done uh, I blew it out with compressed air making sure that all the scribe lines uh, got blown out so that the dust did not fill them up and we lose detail in there. So I'm going to throw a little bit of primer on there and uh, then I'm going to start drilling out some drain holes. All right, you can see that we have got some uh, primer on there. It is dry. I can see all of the outlines of the areas that I'm going to be cutting nice and clearly. Uh, weapon of choice, uh, rotary tool with a carbide um, routing bit uh, on the end. I'll give you a close-up of the one that I'm going to be using. So um, basically, I'm going to cut into the model and leave about a sixteenth of an inch uh, or less around the perimeter and I'm going to finish it off with some files. So uh, let's take a look at an example and, and then I'm going to get to work. Alright, here are the tools that I'm going to use. I've got two different kinds of files. I've got a really coarse uh, square file and then uh, a finer one there. Um, I'm going to start out, we're going to see if we can get this coarse one in place. It's just a little bit big, it's going to take a little bit of work. So what I might use in this particular case, some thinner flat files, uh, those will fit in this hole a lot better. The big thing about this is just to take your time uh, don't obviously over cut it. Um, much better to take a little bit longer and get it right than have to repair. So managed to get all of the flood holes cut, uh, filed, and they're all in shape. Ran a little bit of coarse sandpaper over the inside to remove any of the fibers uh, that may have gotten loose. Uh, so it, everything is nice and smooth now. Let's move on to uh, adhering the rear upper section to the lower hull, uh, which is where our control surfaces are going to be because that will allow us to work on those and uh, let's stuff some bulkheads in this boat to keep it in form. Alright, this is the piece in question. This is the uh, upper section of the rearmost part of the hull. This is the lower hull. I am going to uh, be adhering this permanently in place. Uh, before I do that though and get it all sealed off, I'm going to use my rotary tool and of course uh, sanding drum and I'm going to rough up uh, about an inch uh, along the inside faces here which is going to remove uh, or roughen up that surface of the epoxy hull 
and, and allow uh, a layer of epoxy cloth to stick on there really, really well. Okay, I've adhered this uh, section onto the lower hull temporarily, just basically tacked it there with a little bit of CA glue, uh, ensuring that the outside edges are completely flush. Now, this is obviously not structurally sound enough uh, to remain like that, so we're going to be using some epoxy and cloth to secure that permanently in place. But since we are uh, doing this exercise anyway, I am also going to adhere the um, lower section uh, of the forward hull to the upper hull uh, in the same manner. So we're going to rough up the edges, secure it with CA glue, uh, and uh, like I said, make sure that you rough up that inside lip. All right, before we go any further and before I forget, uh, again, I elected to put additional drainage holes in the middle of the hull. So we had this uh, rear section for drains, we've got this forward section, for drains and I added uh, just in the middle there four rectangular openings myself. I scribed those in, um, cut them out and that'll just allow the hull to drain uh, that much faster, uh, a little bit more conveniently because both the front and the back um, are actually higher than the lowest part of the hull. So you'd end up with water sitting in there and we don't want that. So I added some additional drainage holes in there. Let's take a look at the materials that uh, I'm going to use to uh, adhere the upper and lower hull together. This is just a, a two-ton uh, epoxy, a two-hour um, cure epoxy. And uh, this is some cloth, some fiberglass cloth and disposable paintbrush. All I'm going to do is uh, basically mix this up. Um, this is going to be for the rear section. Um, what I'll probably do for the front section because it's going to be a little bit harder to get to. I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of acetone um, just to make it a little bit thinner. It'll penetrate a little bit easier. Um, but for this rear section, I'm just going to use it as is. It'll be thick and I'll have to kind of massage it in there, but it'll work just fine. All right, uh, I'm going to start by putting a layer of epoxy, spreading it on the inside of the hull. And this is going to give the uh, epoxy cloth something to kind of adhere to before we start positioning it around. I'm going to take the uh, fiberglass cloth and lay it across the seam. I'm going to push it into place with our brush. And we'll do the same for the other side. Now our objective is to completely wet out that cloth so that it's completely saturated. All right, as you can see, I have gone ahead and I've started to install the supplied bulkheads into the lower hull. Um, in terms of measurements, wanted to make sure that all of these bulkheads were based off of the position of the watertight cylinder. Uh, in this particular case, it's a 30 inch overall length. Uh, what I ended up doing is measuring the exact center of the boat. Uh, went out 14 inches to either side, which will allow for a one inch overhang for me to set up my hold down hardware. Marked out the location uh, of the rest of the bulkheads and I've tacked them in place temporarily just with a little bit of CA glue ensuring that I roughed up the hull with some very coarse sandpaper.
to make sure that we get maximum adhesion. Now, that's all great. Uh, and you're gonna go ahead to permanently affixing those. Um, but one thing that I did notice is if we sight down the hull, the starboard side uh, is almost perfectly straight. Uh, if we sight down the port side, we've got a little bit of a wow in there. Uh, don't like it very much. I want to straighten that out. So I'm going to give something a shot here. The neat thing about epoxy um, is that for at least uh, a while anyway, it is a little bit malleable with heat. So what I am going to do is basically turn this on its side uh, on this perfectly flat work surface that I have, heat it up um, and then let it relax. And in theory, that should straighten everything out. So let's see uh, if my vision for this actually pans out. Well, that actually worked better than I thought. Uh, you can see I've got my uh, heat gun out there. That's what I used <clears throat> to heat everything up. Uh, and basically what I did is I warmed up uh, both the inside and the outside of the hull. And I just gave it a little test squeeze. And as soon as it started getting to the point where it was giving a little bit, uh, that's when I decided that that was going to be enough heat. Uh, turned it on its side, pressed it down, uh, and now you can see if we sight along the hull, uh, we've got perfectly straight line that matches up with the other side. So um, we should have a nice even seam uh, in this boat when we start putting the upper hull into place. All right, what we are looking at here right now is a test fit of the upper hull onto the lower hull. Now, when I set the upper hull onto the lower hull, um, there was like a quarter of an inch gap uh, in here. Even after I installed this uh, second bulkhead on the inside there to maintain alignment with the um, boat on the, both faces there, so, uh, of course, you can stretch it out. This is a, a nice thin hull. It's got a lot of give to it. Uh, but we want to make sure that everything sits really nice and evenly. Um, once uh, you go to, to put it down, we don't have to stretch uh, things to make it fit. So basically, again, the solution is to put the hull in place, make sure that everything is aligned, and heat it up. And that's what I've ended up doing. Uh, it's quite warm right now. I am going to let this cool. And in theory, uh, once it does, it will maintain its shape so that uh, everything will drop right down in place. Just want you to notice too, this uh, seam, you know, is, is just a razor blade thick. So that turned out really, really well. Uh, I'm happy with that. It'll be very difficult to spot the break in the hull there. So let's let this thing cool uh, and we will move on. All right, a little bit more tweaking to do just to get things, uh, the way that I want it to. Um, this is perfectly flush, this seam right here. And that is what we are going for. Obviously, we want it to mate up with this, which is adhered permanently. Um, but as we go along, uh, we start seeing this overhang. And uh, on the inside, on these lips, um, the upper hull is resting tightly against it, so it can't move in any further. Uh, so there's an area there. Uh, and then back here, I don't like it. So um, what I've done on the other side worked really, really well is what I'm gonna do on this side. I'm gonna heat up the, uh, that lip, this fiberglass flange, and you can see the end of it right here. And that comes with the, the kit already in place. You can see it uh, runs down the inside there. Um, but it's probably just sitting up a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab that heat gun again. I'm going to heat just that flange up, just that lip. Uh, it's very, very thin. It doesn't take much heat. Uh, I'm going to press that in and then attempt just to get that looking a little bit better. All right, here we go. Fruits of uh, our labors. It's certainly um, much better than it was, there's still tiny, like a less than a 32nd of an inch difference in some areas, but uh, uh, we are gonna be able to address that with a sander once we get uh, a little bit further on. All right, we are getting ready to wrap up this chapter of the build, but I wanted to show you where we ended up with the um, upper hull and setting that onto the lower hull. 
Um, I have filled the front seam, sanded it uh, smooth. I'll be priming this shortly so we can see what we ended up doing. Had to rescribe uh, some of these lines. Uh, we want to make sure we don't lose any of those details. So just bear that in mind. You want to make sure that's clear of any dust uh, before you end up priming it or you're going to lose all of those details. Um, the bulkheads have been secured in place permanently. Um, you can see that I've got them uh, in the same positions that you saw earlier, but I've used some epoxy to secure them down into the hull permanently. Taking a look at the uh, back here, you can see I've got a large um, hold down ring, and this is going to be the uh, main hold down for this front section. And the way that this works, I've got two uh, really powerful magnets in the back there. I'm going to show you hold this up a little closer, um, what that looks like. We've got an alignment pin up at the top. Uh, in this particular case, it's actually copper. Uh, and then two really powerful quarter inch by quarter inch magnets. Uh, and then the way that this basically works, you set your top hull down in place, hit your um, get it set over the lip, uh, and then just slide it back. And what happens is that pin um, matches to a hole in the bulkhead in the top and snaps in place. So this is all locked down now. And then of course we've got this other rear section, put a lip in place there. That slips into place uh, in the back and then drops down. This will be secured down with a single bolt that will be covered by the missile deck. So you won't actually see any of the hold downs. Um, the plan at this point is to have that missile deck, um, which is right here. Um, there's a pin at the front, just slips into place. And then this will drop down and be held in place with more magnets. So again, no visible hold down hardware. Just pop this up. Uh, and that'll reveal the hold down uh, bolt for that rear section. So coming along really, really nicely. So as I said, I think that's gonna wrap up this chapter. Thanks for joining me. Uh, in the next chapter, we're gonna move on to the rear control surfaces and the sail, uh, operational sail planes. So join me for that one. Uh, if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. Don't forget to check out my website, NautilusDryDocs.com, for this and many other projects, uh, kits, components, electronics, and all other sorts of resources for this amazing RC submarine hobby. Thanks again for joining me. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. We'll catch you next time.